a lot of the words that I've been thinking, living, and breathing for quite a few years now. So um, I, I got to be honest, when I started talking to Nikki, it was, it was a couple of weeks ago, and he was telling me, you know, like I'm putting stuff together, you want to participate. I'm like, participate? I, I, I want to present on this. Just when he told me about the topic, I was really, really passionate about it. And um, one of the things that I wanted, I, I'll, I'll go into who I am and I'll give you my background in a minute. I just want to give you the background as to um, how I ended up being here, at least in my mind. Um, the, the idea of transformation is something that um, I have been thinking about for a very long time. And I'm not thinking about from transformation of getting a haircut, dyeing your hair, or, or getting a new pair of glasses. I'm, I'm not thinking about that. Um, I'm really talking about the personal transformation. And for me, it's not so much as, you know, it went from 2020 to 2021, and I've decided I'm gonna have these, you know, four or five things on my list that I want to go. The transformation that actually I, it, it, that I want to talk to you about is more of a journey that at least I've been through. Um, I want to say like kicked into high gear probably about two years ago and I'm starting to see some of the, uh, some of the fruits of that transformation come to life in my everyday work and I want to, you know, kick it up yet another notch, put it into a higher gear, uh, and I'm going to touch into that uh, when we get to to the end of the conversation, and Nikki's playing a part on that as well. So, um, okay, let, let me start with, uh, for me, the way I would look at this, this is not really a presentation. I don't have a single slide here. I don't have anything to 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 say, hey, here you go, go, uh, go do this. This is, this is more about a conversation. So I'm gonna share with you my thoughts, my ideas. You may agree, you may disagree, but you know, feel free to ask questions, interrupt um, all throughout. Um, so I don't, I don't, I have a rough guideline of what I wanna talk about, but I don't have any specifics. So hopefully that works for you. Let me, let me, let me take a few steps back and tell you who I am. So uh, I'm Ruben, been working with uh, Nestle, the Purina business for about eight years. This is gonna be actually my ninth year. Um, and I am part of the strategic planning team. I'll tell you what that means in a minute because strategic planning depends on, depending on the company that, that, that you're dealing with can, be, can mean multiple things. So I, I like to think of like the way, the way we're looking at it, it's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty fun. So, um, I was born in South America long, long time ago on a galaxy far, far away. Um, it doesn't even feel like it's the same person anymore. Um, you know, if it wasn't for Facebook, I probably would have lost contact with a lot of people a long time ago. But um, anyway, um, so what what is it that I do for Nestle Purina? So I work... I actually, sometimes I can't believe they pay me to do this, but I get paid to identify future opportunities and future disruptions. Basically, um, so this is where I engage people like Nikki. We've been working together for, uh, I wanna say, I've been saying two years for a while, but it's now almost, now it's three years, I think, right, Nikki? So, um, so what we do is we got this process where we identify areas and then we go and we learn more about them, we explore them, we take a deep dive, and then we actually expand it and break it into all these pieces and understand what are the areas that may represent opportunities for us as we move forward into the future. Now, um, the process that we follow is it's part, it figures into this transformation. And I'll go into that in a few minutes. But the, the process that we follow, it's more about, um, if, 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 you, if you're familiar with the, with the foresight methodology is uh, trend scanning, uh, so looking for signals, and then exploration, assessment, and then integration into the business, and finally, the planification of the entire thing on how to uh, how to go about it and what to what to do. 
Does that does that make sense or does that confuse the heck out of everybody? Okay, so um, so Marcus, the basically the approach that we take into a strategic plan is not just understanding what the business is about, is not just a financial aspect that figures into it, but there's a portion of our business that uh, has been disrupted, that was seriously disrupted a few years ago. And in order to understand that better and to make sure that that doesn't happen again, we established a strategic planning team. And the role of this, this a strategic planning team is basically ensure that we are following the right trends, that we're not following fads. And it's not just that, we're actually getting ahead of those trends to understand what could represent an opportunity. Does that add, add more uh, specificity? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So um, let, me, let me move into, into the, the, the idea of reinvention um, because uh, I started my career in market research. I actually began my career in South America doing research for like uh, on, on the supplier side. So I used to work with uh, Coca-Cola, uh, Pepsi, you know, all those blue chip companies, but I was literally just doing research, right? Creating questionnaires, interviewing people, and then, you know, analyzing some of the information, providing some recommendations, and here you go. It was pretty, it was, uh, it, it was a pretty routine approach. Well, um, but like I said, I kicked things into high gear, at least for me personally, about two years ago. Through my entire life, um, I've had this red thread that has connected uh, bigger ideas, that has connected um, the future. You know, I'm a big, uh, I'm a bi I've been a lifelong um, science fiction fan. Um, one of the first science fiction books that I read was Dune. You know, they were about to remake it into another movie. Um, but, the, um, but one of the ideas that really captured my imagination was that of being able to live, understand things through multiple generations throughout a lifetime. That was very important for me because in my, in my personal life, um, we really didn't keep that much history. Uh, in fact, education within my family has been limited. I would probably say I am um, maybe the second educated generation out of my entire family. So, uh, so from my perspective, I realize that we've lost a lot. So Kyra, you mentioned, you mentioned Ruben Alcaraz that plays soccer, right? So um, Alcaraz is actually a city in Spain, is about three hours south of of uh, of madrid and uh, i visited there i took my kids there my wife there uh, we went there like five years ago um beautiful place but i do realize why a lot of people left there's not much there it's like in the middle of nowhere um but the but but the idea is like history and understanding of how you can go from a pretty small village in in in, in Spain to me being born in Paraguay in South America. Um, all those things fascinated me. When I was born, I didn't speak English at all. In fact, I learned English when I was uh, 15 years old. Then, um, and, and the idea of transformation and going from one place to the other and, and all those connections throughout, my, throughout the books that I read throughout my lifetime made me think that there is a constant reinvention of the self um, happening. I'll tie back to what this all means to business in a minute, but I think it's important to understand that um, in order for someone to evolve and to change, there's gotta be something innate. There's gotta be a drive. There's gotta be something important to them that's gotta, that's gotta, that, and the connection has to be made, has to be facilitated by others, but they have, they have to be the ones that have to make that connection. So anyway, so the past and the present were always very important to me. And science fiction brought in that last piece that connected it all for me, which was the future. 
right? I knew nothing about myself in the past. I'm, I'm, I'm playing a role in creating my present, but I didn't understand what my future held. So I wanted, I wanted more, this is the wrong word to use, but I'm gonna say it. I wanted more control or at least the imagination of controlling of what my future would be like. So, um, so a few years ago, maybe four or five years ago, I started the process of by myself learning the learning uh, strategic foresight. This is before I even started working in that department, before my organization even knew what it meant. Um, I, I became completely fascinated by the idea that you can shape some of the future, right? And then from there, I'm also like a pretty big learner. I like to, I like to look at many other things. I like to look at um, different ideas from multiple angles. So um, pretty big Einstein fan as well. So um, once you start talking about the future, talk about the present and talk about the past, there's no way that you can not run into some of Einstein's theories, right? So one of the things that he, that he always mentions, like the past, the past, and the future, actually just, that's, that's just, it's not reality. It's, it's, it's an imagination. It's uh, how we look at time. It's actually, um, it, it's just the way for us to understand it, but that's not necessarily how it functions. So one of his theories talks about the idea that, um, you know, we like to think of linear time. The idea that what we do today influences tomorrow, right? What Einstein was talking about in his work was he was saying, actually, no, that that's not how it works. The past, the present, and the future are constantly influencing each other all at the same time. The reason why I'm bringing this up is because um, when I started thinking about the past, the, pe the present, and the future, I started realizing that some things for me were just clicking. Like I was just making connections left and right that made sense for me personally. And the more and more I did that, the more I realized that some of these things were just going, but I would say the right way for me. Um, so, um, so about, like I said, about two years ago, um, we had some leadership change within within uh, within our team, within our strategic planning group leadership. We had a new, um, our chief strategy officer retired, a new one came in um, and she wanted to understand, okay, so how is it that we do things? Um, and then also, you know, just like anybody else, they got to put their own thumbprint on what's going to be their new approach and their new legacy moving forward. Well, as fate would have it, at the time, I was in the process of actually introducing and training the rest of my team. This is me as part of the strategic planning team already, uh, 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 bringing the idea of um, foresight and the approach of backcasting. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the approach of backcasting, but um, backcasting is actually the process that allows you to, to let me start another way. Everybody should be familiar with the process, of, the process of forecasting, right? You look at where you were, and then you actually just raise a couple of percentages and you say, this is where we're going to go next, right? That's typically how it goes. Um, the idea of backcasting is actually uh, very different. And the way that this is important, should be important for people like, like Marco, for example, is the idea of backcasting is what really can enable the ability for exponential growth. So the moment that you're always looking at the past to create your future, the, re the reason why you do that is because, um, sorry, sorry. Oh, Nikki, you just put in the, thank, thank you for that. Um, the, the reason why backcasting is important to understand uh, exponential growth is because it allows you to work within a new set of boundaries and a new set of possibilities. So if you if you if you ultimately only going to look at where you were to understand where you're going to go, you're going to miss things, right? I mean, I, I can bring in the the cliche example of the iPhone, and and you know, th there's no way you can come up with the iPhone if you're only looking into things that were available in the market before. 
So you kind of have to take the blinders off and you need to understand what the, that, what the new possible reality is and then start taking that as your new playground of possibilities. So let me take a pause here because I'm probably moving very fast and I just want to make sure that uh, I'm, not, I'm not losing anybody. Are there any questions so far? Okay. We're good. Okay, good. So, okay. So we talked about, we talked about backcasting. We talked about, um, oh, well, well, sorry. So backcasting is the process of not, not working from where you were before, but is the idea of working backwards. It is the idea of setting yourself uh, mentally in the future, turning around, looking back and saying, how did we get here? Um, but that idea is it, 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 takes into, it takes into consideration the existence of potential different futures. Doesn't just say the future is not just one. There are many multiple possibilities of what a future could be, right? So then out of that, you as, as, a, uh, as, as yourself or, or with a company that you work with, they could actually... Um, by, by better understanding what the possibilities are, they can, they can choose a preferred feature, mm. which means this is not where we're heading. This is where we want to go. And then once you, once you set that, that as your goal, then you turn around and you say, well, where are we today? And what needs to happen in order for us to get here? And then you, you establishing goals and you're establishing, um, uh, all the, all the partnerships and everything that you need in order to make that come true. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, so in, order for me, in, order for, in order for that to happen, so let me go back to, to the narrative of when our, when our chief strategy officer started, it just so happened that I was in the middle of introducing all these new crazy ideas and concepts within my team. Um, she, in fact, one of her first big meetings was the one that I introduced that into the team. Um, she got pretty excited about it. And, uh, and she said, well, okay, well, we made that. It's kind of like one of the bases for our team. So it's not that we don't do other things that traditional strategic planning teams do, which do financial analysis and understanding, but we, we bring the piece of understanding possibilities. What is it that are the possibilities? What are the possibilities of the future? What is it that we want to do? And then how do we make that happen? So, um, so out of that process of how do we make that happen is where I come in again, right? Once we understand the areas that we want to understand, then we create those teams. I happen to lead one of them that is in charge of understanding that area, exploding into all the potential options, understanding, understanding it more in depth, and then integrating it back into the business as a roadmap. So um, I wonder if I can give you an example with that. Like, um, so somebody give me an example of, like whatever it is that you think about the future, maybe I'll see if I can I can I can um, backtrack it into the present. Do we need universities? I'm sorry. Do we need universities with do we need going to a physical space and being taught stuff? G got it. Got it. Do we need universities? So, yeah. So that's really a good one because we are actually at the at the crossroads, particularly with the pandemic that has shown the ability that people can do multiple things. Like education is not tied to a place. Mm -hmm. Education is tied to a person, right? So, so then th this is the process that we would go through, right? So I would understand with my team, like what are all the potential possibilities? What is it that people, companies and organizations are doing today? What are all the different examples that they're, that they're doing today? And then, we would start exploring, like systematically exploring all these different areas. And by doing that, then you start understanding what are the uh, similarities and differences. 
you know? So, and then what does that look like to where we are today? By comparing where we are today to what, what the potential futures are, then you can say, what remains the same? Basically, what's the same doesn't matter how we look at it versus what, what is different every single time. So when you have those, you know, you, you're gonna run into the idea of, um, I remember education became a big deal, a big topic when uh, the uh, MOOCs, uh, MOOCs came out, right? Um, and that was, uh, what, what was that acronym? Some, something like a multiple online. Passive open online course. Yeah. So, um, so I, I remember universities were actually questioning whether or not that was something that they should offer, right? And now it's standard. Now they all have pretty much have to offer it uh, in order to survive. Um, then you got, you got what happened in California um, saying that they're, anyway, sorry. So I'm, I'm digressing. That's how my mind works. So again, feel free to pull me back to the topic. Um, so by understanding all of these choices and connecting to where we are today, then you could yourself determine where is it that you would prefer to go, right? You can do some qualitative studies, analysis, uh, understanding what are the projections, and then you can understand what is it that is easily reachable for you versus what is a stretch for you. And then you start tying it back. So, so if you want to go to a completely, um, uh, to, to, to an education style that is uh, completely detached for, from, from a university or from a text physical textbook, right? Then you would have to start relying on technology. You would have to start relying on, on individuals having the freedom and the ability and the time mm. to be able to invest in their own education. And what does that look like? And then, you, then we would start putting that together with, well, who's gonna be your student of the future? What, are the, what do they look like? What are their preferences in terms of um, learning, in terms of uh, technology adoption, and where are they going, right? So then you would end up with a potential um, roadmap that would look into, well, in the beginning, it might, might, have to be, might have to be an app that's tied to a phone. Uh, then it might have to be uh, the evolution for that. Well, we might have to go with, uh, with VR or AR. And then eventually we might go with like a brain computer interface, the idea of like the matrix that you can integrate knowledge into uh, directly into people, right? Um, I, I, I'll tell you growing up, for example, I'm sure you, you would all agree that it was when, when you were in school, it was all about ta the, the test, right? You took the test, you either did good or you didn't do, or you didn't do so good, right? And that was it, there were no retakes. There are no retakes. There were no retakes. But today it's very different. I had this entire conversation with my wife, and she was telling me, uh, she enlightened me with a very good, with a very important thought. She said, Well, if you really think about it, like we don't go to school to take tests. Mm -hmm. You go to school to learn, right? So isn't it more important for you to understand that it's that, that for the teacher to understand that you learn the material more so that you did well in one test. So that completely starts changing, at least change my, my perspective of what schooling is, the approach that you follow and how you can, you can integrate learning, right? In fact, then you start going into the idea of, um, of startups and how failing fast is actually how you learn. But that doesn't mean that you don't get another opportunity unless you run out of money, that's a different story. But, um, but that part is really interesting because then you start, you, you start bringing all these ideas and all these concepts into, into, into one and, and you start noticing that a lot of these actually overlapping concepts and ideas in all in, in just in different areas that just have not been connected. 
So um, hopefully that that that's an example. And 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 I'm sorry if I'm just keep going on a tangent, but the way but the way that I would think about it is by understanding what the potential feature could look like, who the potential users are going to look like, and what are the ways that they like to engage today. So do you have examples of today that may potentially outliers today that could potentially become mainstream tomorrow? Ruben, do so, you have an example of do you, what you have done in the past that we could know of, um, as in that you said, okay, this is what's going to happen in the future and what is actually happening at Nestle right now? Because I remember Neil uh, talking uh, in the previous hour, I said, I'm working with these big corporate companies and nothing is happening and they don't do it. And you're working for a big corporate company. Yeah. So tell yeah, me. I, no, what unfortunately, I, I can't. I, I can. I cannot tell you that. Um, so all it's I can tell you over eight years to come up with something new. Since you're already there for eight years, as in there is nothing yeah. happened just now. Yeah. So my move into the strategic planning team happened about two years ago. Okay. So, uh, so the approach that we're following now it's relatively new to the organization altogether. Um, but, but I've been with the company, um, about eight, almost going into nine years, the seven, seven years prior to that, I was in a research function, consumer research function, which never really filled my, there was something inside of me that says, this is not, I, there, there was no that. science fiction. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So oh, I'm so curious now. You probably can't say it. Hey, where did everybody go? Um, I don't know. I think we're all there. I, I think what Kari is asking for is there something out there on shelf that when you back engineer the process started the way you just shared that? Oh, yeah. There, there, there are a lot of things that are, that are on shelf and that are um, work in progress. Um, but us, like any other company, you know, we're working with a lot of things and unfortunately I cannot, as much as I would love to say, Hey, this is what I'm working on. And Nikki knows some of the stuff that I'm working on. Um, but I cannot share it. So for, but you can imagine reasons why, um, no, <laughs> <laughs> number one, number one is my wife. She likes me staying employed. So, <laughs> well, anyway, um, just building on uh, Kyra on your or your comment of science fiction, uh, that's actually a very insightful comment because the reason why I made the change from one role within the organization to another, as opposed to going somewhere else, is because I really like the company that I work for. Um, but I felt like I needed more. I needed more personal growth. There was one part of me that says, hey, you look at the press in the past all the time to, to say, this is the consumer behavior. Um, but then at the same time, the organization was starting to get disrupted by trends. And some of them have been around for a very long time. Um, so I wanted to find a different way to, to, to do things. And that led to um, how do I integrate concepts and ideas of science fiction? So this is where we go to our, our Londoner friends. Um, um, you can start thinking of H.G. Wells. He is one of my absolute heroes. I don't know if you are aware, but the first person in history to actually try to create a school of foresight was H.G. Wells. Mm. Very well-known fact, actually, um, the, his, um, um, I know he wrote an article or a little booklet in which he talked about um, that we got plenty of people looking at the past, like paleontologies, anthropology, like people looking into that, but there was no one looking into the future, trying to understand where things are going and that uh, it could be treated just like a science. It could be uh, because you, you're using a lot of the same elements. You can use mathematical concepts to create, well, you look at today, right? That's what a regression is basically in a way. If you look at the past, you to extrapolate for the future, right? 
but there are other softer sides of the sciences that could actually be integrated to create a process of, uh, of uh, strategic foresight. He wasn't calling it that, he just called it a school of foresight. Um, I think he said he did that at the Royal Academy in uh, close to the turn of the century, 1920s, I wanna say. Um, but anyway, um, very big, uh, very big hero of mine. So I started um, doing a lot of things on my own. Um, what I can't, what, Kyra, what I can talk to you about is uh, the areas that I personally, I am looking into to, uh, to understand where things are heading. So these are the things that are above and beyond of what my organization is doing. And, and in fact, they shouldn't be looking into that because some of them may not necessarily be uh, conducive to business, right? So I'm, I'm interested on the human aspect of things. I'm interested on the intellectual aspect of things, where how things are going, how things are changing. Um, and, and again, like the path that I've taken here hasn't been one um, like, like I said, I didn't, I didn't just switch, you know, new year, new you, and this is who I am today. I've actually been building into this and been trying to create this, this world and persona that allows me to live in the future today, right? And that means having a process and having a way of understanding and looking into signals of futures that want to come and become true. Um, so, uh, so above and beyond what I do for work, I created this website, um, Nikki's aware of this called Prometeum, uh, P-R-O-M-E-T-E-U-M.org. Uh, in here, I actually explore different ideas, different concepts like, um, uh, like, um, quantum physics. I explore, uh, different ideas of, um, what is, what, 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 what's one of the latest ones? Um, uh, this one. The simulation hypothesis, the idea that we live in a video game and a lot of these concepts that believe it or not tie very closely with religion and doesn't just look into, um, in, 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 into the concept that everything that we live touch is uh, it, it's not real. Like there, there's, a, there's an aspect of, of reality of that that I explore as well. But I'm interested in all these concepts. And the reason why I'm interested in all these concepts is because I want to understand who people are, where, where they come from and where they're going, right? I am interested in where my family is going to be three, four generations from now. So the order, the, so by having a better understanding of where things are going on a personal perspective, I can make a generational plan, if, if, if you will, uh, like trying to, get, trying to get my children to understand that um, if you ask any kid today who, who, what you want to be in the future, you're probably going to get those typical answers. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a doctor. And I, and I used to get those. Um, but reality is that those are um, careers that are going to be heavily disrupted yeah. by uh, technologies like artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. right? It's not that the doctors or lawyers are going to go away. It's just that the bulk and a lot of the work that's going to happen in those areas are going to be leveraged by artificial intelligence. So therefore, the lawyers and the doctors of the future are not really going to go to school to learn how to dissect and everything. They're going to they're, they're, they're going to have to have a learn working knowledge of that, but most likely they're going to have to have a better working knowledge of how to engage with technology that allows them to do that better and how to maintain and evolve with that technology. So that's a very different view of who you are today, uh, of who uh, uh, who the uh, elites of, um, what's the word that I'm working for? Uh, the working elites are, you know? So, um, so those, are, those are all areas that I'm interested in. Yes, it could sound a little science fiction-y, but actually it's what gets me going. Um, and I love to, to look into all ideas and concepts. So um, I think humanity is like, 
a massive network, massive disparate network of people who are disconnected. We all have this abilities. We all have these uh, capabilities of doing and thinking, you know, what I'm doing right now, like what I'm talking about is hopefully, I think it's coming across like it's my passion, you know? Yeah, it, we can see that. <laughs> <laughs> it's what it's what I love to do, what I love to think about. That doesn't mean that I don't do other things, right? That's, um, but, uh, but, but the reason- Aren't really you every now and then based on the, um, uh, if you're watching sci-fi uh, sci as in, Every now and then I get scared of it. Black Mirror, it scares the shit out of me. As in thinking of what can happen or can go on. And I really think the ethical discussion in this matter is also very important, but it really scares the shit out of me, things like that. Yeah, the, the there are, and, and that's a generational thing. So there are... If you think about it, if you, if you think about the, the feature that Star Trek's from the 1960s and even the 1990s presented, it was a, it was a pretty uh, pretty ideal feature, right? Not like there weren't problems, but workable problems, and they're all going towards something better. Uh, um, if you look at if you look at the the ideas of what the future looks like today, it's it's all about. It, it's all about the uh, the apocalypse and surviving. It's it's about it's about um, um, what was it The Walking Dead, uh, zombies, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, but dystopian stories write the better scripts for movies. Yeah, the, the, actually, the, the stories are still the same. Um, if 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 you ever want, I'll send this whole thing. I did this whole uh, analysis on the idea of the evolution of uh, z zombies, vampires, uh, vukralakas, which is which used to be spirits um, from from Greek culture to to things like that, they're actually all the same thing. Uh, they just they just it's like the remember the hero uh, the, the hero of a thousand faces from um, Joseph Campbell. Well, it's basically it's the opposite. Is the villain of a thousand faces? It's all about the same thing. Um, the, so anyway, long story short, cause I, I, I can, I can, I can go on that. I can go on like that forever. So, um, just to tie back to the original topic of reinvention, um, I would say my life and my career started getting a lot better. The moment I allowed that side that you can call it science fiction side to actually come out and play a little bit more often. Uh, now I, I, I do have to limit <laughs> the, the time that it, I can allow it to take control and the scope that I allow it to take control of my life. Um, the, the reason being is that, um, if, if I talk about the future too long without really bringing it back and understanding where we are today and how do we, how can I make things happen in, in a way that makes sense to people? Not everybody's mind works that way and not everybody can keep up with, with the, oh, I have the same vision as you. So Kyra, to, to, to your idea of, well, the feature of uh, what, what Black Mirror uh, portrays is, uh, it's scary. Yeah, it's scary because that's what sells. If you start looking into um, box office uh, hits, movies and stuff like that, it's it's drama sells, disasters sell. Um, uh, why our president? Why was he so so popular in the news? Because he was always creating drama, you know. And for whatever reason, we as as a species, we love that, right? So, so part of the understanding is that uh, that has a time and a place and it's got an entertainment component to it. And that is at least part of where I wanna take things in a different route. I don't wanna take it down the path of entertainment. I wanna take it, take it down the path of a usable, um, uh, a, a usable feature or a framework of a potential feature that someone could take advantage of. So, um, 
Oh, Marcus, sorry, I see, I, I, I see a question over here. Uh, I once asked the kid, what do you want to be? And she answered, I want to be an elephant. Love to hear more about that one. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm oh, sorry, Ruben, I've, I've been fascinated. I've just been looking at the amazing stuff which you have been publishing. Oh, thank you. And listening to your wide range ability to enthrall people on a variety of different areas. And I'm piecing it with a guy who's working in a pet food company. And I have to tell you, I'm finding this. Either you've got this amazing ability to separate yourself into the world of the fantastic stuff which you're doing and constraining yourself into generating income by thinking of futures or else there is something going on Nestle, which is going to amaze us because <laughs> you are creating something. We're going to go, holy shit. <laughs> and out comes something. Now, I'm piecing together your secrecy on what you're working on. And I'm guessing there's some holy shit coming out. Am I anywhere close? Um, maybe. Um, oh, God say, yeah. just say. Uh, hope, yes, hopeful. <laughs> Hopefully, um, yeah. I, I and, and, and honestly, I, I can't thank you. I appreciate all the kind comments. I, I, I honestly cannot cannot talk about what what uh, what Nestle Nestle Purin is working on. Um, only because uh, it's a pretty competitive market. I mean, if you if you keep up with the news, um, actually everybody everybody and their uncle wants to be in the pet food business right now. It's, um, we're not recession proof, we are, um, but we are recession resistant. Mm. Um, so, so some of the largest manufacturers in the world want to play in this space. It's not just that, technology companies want to play in it too. So, um, so for that reason, uh, you know, and I know Nikki that this is going to be posted and all that, but for that reason, I can't, I, I, I can't divulge um the stuff that we're working on i got nikki on the pretty good nda so i trust that <laughs> um but uh we're not digging deeper in tell us about nesta Purina here so yeah well but but anyway th thank you thank you for that so so part of the reason on uh, your comment of me working for a pet food company um yeah you you would you would think that they wouldn't need people like me hmm. Um, but they do, but they do. And, and, and this is the part, this is part of that journey that has helped me uh, transform to who I am today is because I'm working with good people, good leadership, and they actually trust me enough to do what I do best. And that cannot be underscored. Um, it's as, as good as anyone is, as good as I am in, 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 in doing, doing my thing, right? I still need, um, need the help of people to do, uh, to, do, to do what I do, right? And that still, needs to, that still needs to deliver value for the organization, which is why I need to scale a lot of stuff back and I need to build the separate, uh, se the separation of church and state, if you will. And I want to use the last 10 minutes to steer away from Nesta Perino because that's not, not, not about what the session is, more into this reinvention, the reboot concepts. Um, yeah. Chris. So, yeah. So let me, let me, let me just close it, close it by saying that. Um, so one of the things that I'm working on right now, um, actually I'm working with Nikki, is the idea of understanding strengths, uh, the idea of understanding personal strengths. Uh, we all have each each individual one has a particular set of strengths. We all, we have weaknesses too, right? But there is way too much emphasis, I think, in 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 weaknesses, and not enough emphasis on strength. So part of the thing that Nikki and I are doing one 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 project that we started is the idea of how to leverage the innate talent that people have to create the startup of the future. 
right? How do we partner? How do we how do we connect people? How do we um, how do we um, how do how do we establish the, those really strong bonds and allow people to to um, not people companies to actually flourish? Um, so that's that's part of the and a, a little experiment that we're running right now. Um, you know, if any of you, if any of you guys would like to be part of it, uh, feel free to connect with Nikki and or myself, uh, and then we'll 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 take it from there. So I see uh, Marcus's hand went up, so that's good. Thank you. Oh, Marco and, and Kyra too. Good, good. So um, so yeah. So 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 with that, I'll just I'll just turn it over to you guys, and then you know if there if there are any questions or things that I mentioned that didn't make sense, I'm happy to clarify. Floor is open, and regarding the strength thing, we'll loop back to you guys. I don't think you saw my hand because I might be on the screen, but I was putting my hand up as well, Nikki and uh, uh, Ruben. So yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Yeah, I think we're all in. Yeah, I think so. Good, good. So, um, are, are there any questions? Uh, not Nestle Purina related. <laughs> No, I, I wasn't meaning that. I was, I was talking about, because we were previously talking about big companies and, and the, the slowness to react um, and how a lot of people who want to make things happen find that they need to join a smaller company. You know, we, we almost started talking about optimal sizes and stuff. And, and that's what got me saying, you know, uh, how are you making it happen within a large organization? And, and a large organization which prides itself on its history. Because uh, we were talking earlier, you know, about, oh, there are some people who are deadbeat, you know, they've been, just because the organization's been around for this many years doesn't mean it can't just go, almost. Right. And, and then we move to you, who's, who's got a completely different, different, it appears, mindset. And that sort of like screwed me up a little bit, which is why I was saying, how come? So I'm not yeah. insulting Nestle, I'm not insulting Purina, I'm not insulting anything. I'm just saying, how, how, how have you managed to make it work? So, <laughs> in so let me a big company. Yeah. So let, let me caveat with that. So so the I I, I don't want to make it sound like hey I, I say we got Ruben says we got to do this and we go and, and do it. No no no. But but by no means that's not what I'm saying. Uh, what I am saying is just like any company, even even if we're a small company, right? ideas have to be vetted somehow, even if it is between two people and having a conversation and understanding it, right? Um, understanding what the path forwards are, are going to be. The, the reason why I think we are in a good place right now, it's because we have that venue. We have a venue in which we can share these ideas, in which we can, we can provide the rationale behind it to make it happen. I just happen to be in a good, in a good team, in a good position, we have, we are. Um, let me see. We're very. My team is basically. My team reports to the CEO directly, right? Uh, in a lot of other places, strategic planning is part of a financial function, for example, right? And it's very. Um, what I would say is a limit. It's a very important, but somewhat limited view of the business because if you only look at at, at 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 revenue, well, you're only looking at ideas and things that are regenerating revenue today. If there is a big idea that doesn't generate revenue, it's not part of that conversation, mm -hmm. and that's where I think is the way the way we are looking into it is a lot more flexible, to um, and probably. Uh, uh, an entertaining, to use the wrong word, but the, the idea for anyone wants to be part of that conversation is, well, I want to understand what the potential view, uh, views of uh, visions of the future are going to be. Do you okay. think that some organizations can't see that because they're so looking at the here and now that the the approach which organizations should take is to give themselves the freedom 
for imagining what it could be and then yeah. back casting to where they are yes it's, uh, it's end up with a definitely that uh, and i don't i actually i <clears throat> i haven't run into any leader even a, in businesses that haven't worked haven't worked well mm. um, that didn't understand what was coming mm. it's just a matter of resources right I remember I know boss of mine used to say well it's it's uh, you got two problems They're like well I got all this stuff I got to do and he said well you got two problems right um, y you can have you can have a people problem or you can have a money problem right it's like it's just a matter of how, how do you allocate those two resources that you have right and for the most part is the tyranny of the present right in in order so, so what makes a company like ours uh, be able to have someone like me do what i do is because we're really good at understanding our business today right so it's just a matter of trying trying to get those two things to work to work together also don't don't let the fact that I've worked in Purina for eight, nine years, like go unnoticed is I understand how the company functions internally, right? So I understand how the company thinks. So being able to take different ideas and concepts from other places that are foreign in a lot of, in a lot of instances and bringing it back down and being able to translate it into the language of the organization that the organization speaks and thinks, it's very important. So, so for any company out there, I would say part of having someone do this role is you got to have someone who understands the organization from the inside out, not just from the outside in. And that is the problem with what I would say is a lot of consultancies is they only understand the organization from the outside in, mm. Mm. right? Where you got to have the, mer the, the merging of the two. Niall, you have a question. The last yeah, one. It was, it, it's, I mean, it's mm. absolutely fascinating. I, I've been make, making a lot of notes about the personal journey and you know how that resonates too for me. Um, with your transformation and with Prometheum, right? You know the Prometheum mm. or, or, um, website you were in the work you've done, done there. I get the sense that that's the sort of really exciting part for you. <laughs> And although, you know, you enjoy and love working at Nestle and it, it clearly passionate about that too, if push came to shove, <clears throat> would, would you be keen to say, okay, I think I could do something with Prometheum? Because, I mean, it, it's really exciting what you're doing on that. I think, uh, you know, as Michael was saying. It's... Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I often have that thought, um, but I try to push it out of my mind for now. Hmm. Um, but the, re the reason being is right now I'm in a good place, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm in a good place, uh, professionally within, within Nestle Purina. Uh, but also I'm having a lot, of, a lot of fun right. with, uh, building and exploring with Prometheum and it doesn't like, it's not a chore, you know, I don't, I don't have deadlines. I don't like, I, I do. I, I dive in as much as I can. I can, I can, you know, I can, I can create a lot of things at my own pace. And uh, I don't want to lose that, that I don't, I don't want to turn that into a process, if that makes any sense, uh, anytime soon. Now, eventually, if it becomes like something that's a money making thing, and blah, 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 and I'm making six figures, and uh, maybe I'll have that, I'll have that thought at that point, or I'll entertain that thought more seriously at that point. Um, but uh, but I'm not I'm not I'm not there at, at this time. I mean, part of part of if you it, it, you know this is just because I just because I like this. If you go to if you go to the article piece, you know you'll know you notice that I have the written article and everything, but I also have the audio, right? Um, if you go in to and you, you play that, you're gonna hear my voice, right? That's not actually me. That's an artificial intelligence. So I've actually created an avatar of my voice to, to do that. And partially is because as I started doing all of this, right, I wanted to be able to do it with my own voice. I actually, I remember Nikki telling me you should do it with your own voice and I didn't want to do it. Uh, I started doing it. I got a microphone, did all of this. 
but the production time was, was taking me so long to do and the quality wasn't there that I actually started exploring and I started using artificial intelligence. I started with Amazon's Polly, then I moved, I moved into, into the solution that I'm using now um, that allowed me more flexibility and I can work more with the branding and I can work more with, um, but the production is a lot faster. Something that would take me two or three days to complete, I can actually do now I don't know, four or five hours in one day, um, which is, uh, sorry, that's my dog howling, if you can hear. Wow. Yeah, yeah. she'll keep going for, for a while. Wow. Fantastic. It's an ambulance. Fantastic. That's my other dog joining. <laughs> Your dog is set. We've hit the top of the hour. Yeah, they're, they're announcing the top of the hour and time's up. But, uh, but just to finish, sorry, let me just do this. Just, just to finish the thought is um, being able to explore all those ideas. Mm -hmm. Like I, I wouldn't be able to do that if, if I was too serious about it. You know what I mean? Like, so like one, once you fall into the rut that you establish brands, then and people know you for one thing it's almost, it's very difficult to start moving away from that where for me, I'm an explorer, right? Yeah. Um, I don't like to use presentation templates. I won't, I won't use the same template twice. Um, I, I don't want to use the same approach twice. So I, I want to explore those different ones, you know, and that's just who I am. I thought Ruben and me were just sinking and aligning and see how our strengths go together and complement. And it's a really interesting observation journey. Thank you so yeah. much. That was an amazing session. Um, you're yeah. taking me. I'm going to. Yeah. Uh, you. Loved it. That was really. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Unexpectedly you. wide ranging, fabulous stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.